Um, I don't know if I have much time to talk about um, the 20-somethings, but this, after all, is the period which traditionally or historically has been when families are formed, when people are in their 20s. Uh, look at this little graph here uh, about that compares the 1960s, the dark blue bar, with uh, 2010, the light blue bars. This is telling you um, how much the old pattern, which was to finish your schooling, uh, leave home, become financially independent, get married, and then have a baby, and do it all before age 30, I did it before age 30, a lot of people in my generation did, and you can see the statistics there, that was the common norm back in 1960. Look at where we are now. Um, it's way down. I find this a uh, very interesting set of data in terms of telescoping the fact that this is a new life stage and uh, it is creating some challenges because these young people in their 20s you know, we always think about teenagers and teenage pregnancy, but these young people in their 20s are, even though they're not getting married, uh, they are having children. They are getting pregnant. By the way, 70%, almost 70%, of the pregnancies to single women in their 20s, of which there are a lot now, that rate of pregnancy rate has been going up, 70% um, of them are unplanned, unintended, and yet, um, they, you know, it would be a lot better, obviously, if children were uh, being brought into the world when parents are ready to parent them and hopefully have a partner uh, with which to do it. Um, I don't know how many of you know the research that's called um, the Family, the Fragile Family Study, which has been carried on at uh, Princeton and Columbia by Sarah McClanahan and uh, Irv Garfinkel and some others. But, you know, this research is an eye-opener in showing um, sort of nationwide, they do focus on metropolitan areas, but it's a representative sample otherwise, that there is just a tremendous amount of family turmoil and complexity amongst these 20-somethings. Um, amongst these unwed parents who are having children, uh, many of them are in serious relationships. Uh, many of them plan to marry at the time the child is born, but within five years, uh, only 35% of them are still together. And many of the women have gone on to find new partners and had children by uh, new fathers. So it's becoming a very complicated family life uh, for children. Um, big question is, should we, can we, bring back the success sequence. What do I mean by the success sequence, the old success sequence, where you graduated from school, you got a job, you married someone, and then you had children within marriage. Uh, if you could do this, and I'm not saying we can, uh, it would have a big effect. I want to show you, uh, well, here's a, this is a, let's see if I can make this slide work. Um, this is just showing how these things are supposed to work. Uh, this next slide is based on some uh, research that my colleague Ron Haskins and I did for our book, Creating an Opportunity Society. Um, and it shows that if you followed the success sequence, in other words, if you did have at least a high school degree, uh, if you did marry before you had children, and so you were in, living in a two-parent family. Uh, the poverty rate, which in 2007, before the recession kicked in and the poverty rate went up, um, only 2% of families would be poor. And so, you know, this issue of family structure and working full-time uh, and waiting until you're married before having children has really had an impact on family economic circumstances. 